Everybody, happy Memorial Day weekend. Hang on one second. That looks better. All right, let me put you up here. This is live. Let me get this set up here. And why shouldn't it have horns, David? What are you trying to say? I'm the devil. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? The Kalazar's coffee cups here. I think it came out pretty good. Are you trying to say a cow doesn't have horns? Does a cow have horns? Yeah, maybe it doesn't. I have to think about that. Yeah, that's interesting, huh? Hmm. Or maybe I meant to do that, and it's a hint or something. I don't know. Uh, good morning, Sean. Good morning, everybody. Happy Memorial Day weekend. I hope you're going to do something fun this weekend. I plan on going to see Deadpool and Han Solo, both. I don't know when, but at some point. When I get tired of doing this, I'm going to go hit the movies. That's going to be my escape. All right, let me talk to you guys about a couple things. There's my work table. My uh, ironing board is my work table over here. So originally I put up a t-shirt, this t-shirt right here. I just got it in the mail, the cow lasers t-shirt, but I don't like the quality. There's almost like a line here and there's some marks that are the actual ink. So I got rid of that vendor. So I took the t-shirts off the website. Nobody had ordered any anyway, so it's okay. Um, so I got a different vendor and I'm going to get a sample of that t-shirt first before I put it back up. But yeah, the quality control of this one, I just didn't like. So, um, but the coffee cups came out cool. This is a different vendor than who did the t-shirts. So the coffee cups are there. If you want to order a cow lasers coffee cup, there's two different sizes uh, of cups. And, uh, it's just a way of saying thanks and supporting the channel. And, uh, yeah, they're there along with the coin. Um, I think I got about half the coin sent out. So that's good. And now I got to get the other half done. And I will over the next three days because Monday's a holiday. I plan on knocking these out. So Tuesday when I go to the post office, I'm not going to promise that they'll all be done, but a good majority of it will be done. And then I'll finally be caught up and then I can start getting into some other things I want to do with the website. Um, the next question I know you have, <laughs> a lot of people have is, cow lasers, how come you not doing any more forest fed videos? What the hell's wrong with you? Um, it has been a while, hasn't it? But I've been busy. I did the grand adventure with those puzzles. For those of you that know what that is, I did a lot of puzzles when I had that hernia operation. Uh, so that kept me busy for about three weeks. That was a lot of fun. And uh, now I'm doing the coins has kept me busy. But tomorrow, tomorrow, I'm going to put up a forest fen vlog on warm waters. So look for that tomorrow. Um, you know what I've been doing? You know, everybody in the world is doing YouTube videos. And now we've got all kinds of uh, groups on Facebook. And there's some websites, and I mean, the thing's really blown up just in the last year, right? So what I've been doing is watching everybody else's uh, Forest Men videos and uh, just kind of taking it in. You know, some are good, some are not so good, and that's okay. You know, anybody out there, most people have a smartphone. 
You can record a video and you can upload it to YouTube right from your phone. And I encourage everybody to do that. I think the more opinions and the more uh, different takes on the poll are good. They're a good thing. And, you know, people can choose to watch them or not. But uh, I've been watching them, and uh, it's pretty interesting. And then, as you know, I've been on a Gypsy's Kiss uh, sometimes on their panel. I think that's a really cool idea that they're trying to bring the community together and uh, do a panel. So there will be some changes to the website coming up. Um, really, I'm just focusing on getting this done and out and caught up. And then as orders come in, I'll actually maybe twice a week go to the post office and keep up on all the new orders. And yesterday, I got no orders, but I figure it's Memorial Day weekend. People are busy, right? But I knew it was going to slow down. So some of you may have noticed the price The price of the coin is now 15 on the website. After I saw everything I had to go through to do this, I had to bump it. So the coin is now 15 plus $3.50 shipping, and that's going to stay. That's a good price. It's going to stay that way. So everybody that ordered uh, previous and got it, you got a pretty good deal, especially with the drawing, I think, in the very beginning. I probably should have made that drawing 20 or 25, but that's okay. I'm not complaining. I kind of jumped into this thing with both feet and uh, not learning how to swim, and uh, I'm learning as I go. So, uh, And thanks, everybody, for joining me on this grand adventure. Hey, how's it going? How's it going, everybody? Has anybody seen Han Solo or Deadpool 2? If anybody has seen both movies, let me know which one I should go see. I want to go see both this weekend, but uh, if I had to pick one, let me know if you've seen both, Han Solo or Deadpool 2. Deadpool 2. I think they're both great movies, and I'm definitely going to see both. But uh, I was just wondering which one I should go see. The other thing is here in Vegas, Andrew Dice Clay. Any Andrew Dice Clay fans? Andrew Dice Clay is at the Laugh Factory at the Tropicana uh, tonight and tomorrow night. And I might try and go see him, too. I haven't seen him in years. I've seen him in concert a bunch of times over the last 20 years. I remember seeing him in, like, 19, 1991 at the, was it the Capitol Center in Maryland, back when I was in the Navy, a long time ago. But uh, I think Dice is hilarious. And as he gets older, he changes his act a little, but it's still Dice. So I may try and go see that tonight. I don't know yet. I have no idea what those tickets cost. So, But if... I know I'm going to get tired of doing this for the next couple hours, so I definitely got to get out of here and go do something. Oh, and the coin Lazar shirt I had, the white one, I had that made at the mall. That one's not going to be available on the website. I really like how that one looked, and that's why when I got this one, I said, ah. So I am going to get the logo in different colors. So if you wanted the white logo on a black T-shirt, which I think looks really good, but it will be cow lasers, not coin lasers. Coin lasers is just for me because I'm coin lasers, right? And uh, ordered another 300 coins due to demand, so we're up to 900. And Hang on, everybody. All right, I'm having issues with the app. It keeps turning itself off for some reason. All right, then we're going back to the music. I got a couple things I got to figure out in the stream. I'll be right back, guys. Thank you. 
keep stopping and I don't know why so it cut off and I don't even know where it cut off at so just bear with me all right I'm using my phone to record this and that's problem number one probably I look a little better all right uh, <laughs> Mr. Bill brother Bill I need to do a panel with me and Bill what do you guys think you two need me and Bill Gorman talking about them? all right so uh I don't know where it cut off last time. So issue number one is I'm using my phone to record the YouTube live and I really need a separate computer or laptop so I can just do it that way and be on it and see what's going on. You know what I mean? But I'm getting there. I'm working on it. Uh, baby steps. That's how I'm doing this thing. Baby steps. And I'm not going into debt to do it. I'm doing it all, you know, paying everything as I go. So I'm not going to run up a bunch of debt trying to get this stuff going. So, And that's why I ordered the coins 300 at a time. They got to sell out and then I'll order the next batch. So what I was saying before it cut out, I don't know if you guys heard it or not, but I've ordered up to 900. I've got another 300 coins coming in the mail. So we're at 900 coins. I've got 600. When I get those 300 in, about 60 of them are already ordered and will go out, right? That'll be the second week in June. Uh, so hopefully it'll come in earlier. These came in earlier than I thought. Hopefully they'll come in earlier than I had, than I thought. And that's on the website that if you order now, it will ship out second week of June. If it's earlier, great, but if not, it will definitely be the second week of June. I'm gonna try and get all these done this weekend. I've got today, tomorrow, and Monday with the holiday. And Tuesday, I'll be going to the to the post office, hopefully with the, all these, if not all of them, most of them. By the end of the week, these will all be in the mail. Guaranteed, by the end of the week. Barring something uh, coming up that I don't know about, but these will all be in the mail by the end of the week. Kalazar's coffee cups, finally, right? Kyle Lazer's coffee cups. They're on there on the website. I had this t-shirt on the website, but when I got the t-shirt in, I don't like the quality. It's not solid. There's a couple marks here that looks like the ink ran or something. And I don't know what the quality control of that company is. So that company's gone. I said, eh, nah, no second chance. So I took the t-shirts down because I'm going to go with a different vendor to create the t-shirts. And once I get a sample in, I'll be able to judge if it's the quality that I want, and then I'll put it back up. But the coffee cups are from a different vendor, and the coffee cups are up there. So if you guys want to support the channel um, and the videos and some of the things I've been doing, the Grand Adventure, all that fun stuff, uh, buy a coffee cup. There's two different sizes, like a 10-ounce and I believe a 15-ounce. But uh, you can check that out on cowlasers.com. So make sure this thing hasn't cut off again. Hey, I think we're still going. All right. Hang on one second. And that's the problem with using your phone is people text you as you're trying to record. And uh, so I'm definitely going to have to get a laptop or something. Yeah, Gary, 900 coins. I'm telling you, it's a lot more work than I ever thought it was going to be. But I'm having fun doing it, so... And if you guys look on the website, if you've been on the website lately, a coin now costs $15 plus $3.50 shipping and handling. Once I started doing this, I realized the amount of hours I'm going to have to put into it. And that's going to be the final price. A coin is $15, $3.50 shipping and handling. If you order five or more, the shipping goes up maybe to 6 bucks. I'm still working that out. So the people who have already ordered and were in the drawing, you got a really good deal. Um, when I was doing it at $13.50 and... Uh, that included the shipping and handling, right? So really you got a coin for about 10 bucks. So that was a good deal. And that was a way to say thank you for everybody that watches YouTube videos and did the grand adventure and all that stuff. 
But now as maybe word will start to get out for people who don't know who I am, but just want a coin. It's going to be 15. So I don't think that's unreasonable. I was looking at some challenge coins and custom coins online. They're anywhere from 20 to 25 to 30 dollars. So I think 15 is where we're going to leave it at. And uh, once we get to the 900, I'm going to stop and kind of reassess and decide what I want to do moving forward and get some advice from uh, Forrest Fan as well. So. Um, I think that was it. Anything else? Before I actually start getting into these coins again. The website, there'll be some changes to the website in about a week. So keep an eye out for that. Oh, and I don't know if it made it through when the thing cut off, but a lot of people have been like, cow lasers, how come you're not making Forrest Fenn videos anymore? What's going on? Somebody was like, you know where the treasure is, don't you? You stop because you want to get out there and look for it. No, that's not the case. Wink. As far as you know, that's not the case. Um, everybody's making YouTube videos now, right? There's all kinds of forums on Facebook, groups and forums and websites, including mine. And uh, I've just been watching everybody else's. I've done the Gypsy Kiss, Gypsy's Kiss panel a couple times, which I think is a great idea to bring the community together. And I encourage everybody to upload your own YouTube video and give your opinion. You know what opinions are like, and we all have one. And uh, mine's no better than anybody else's. But um, I just happen to be doing it longer than most people. That's all. So tomorrow, I will make this promise. Tomorrow, I'm going to do a vlog on Forest 10 on Warm Waters. It's been, it's been, what, a year and a half, I think, since I made a video on Warm Waters. The first video, anyway. So I'm going to revisit that. So look for tomorrow. Uh, the Forest Fen vlog will go up tomorrow. And that will give me a nice break from the coins. So let me turn some air on. You know, it's supposed to be like 90, I think, out here in Vegas today. Hey, Lewis. No, it's not all copper. It's not a solid copper coin. I believe it's a zinc alloy. It's a metal zinc metal alloy. So an alloy means a different bunch of metals together, I think. The copper is just a copper finish. It's an antique copper finish. Think of it as a coating, okay? I mean, somebody wanted to cut one of these open. I guess you can see what the inside looks like. But uh, it weighs about uh, two to three ounces. I think it's two ounces with the plastic uh, piece and maybe it might be three ounces. Um, I forget how many millimeters thick it is, maybe three millimeters thick. But when you get one in the mail, you'll be able to see. Um, but it is just an, a copper finish. It's not a solid copper coin. Uh, I don't know what the prices of the copper are, but it was a solid copper coin. It probably would have cost a lot more to make, would be my guess. You know, somebody emailed me and said they would like to buy an actual 0.999 silver coin this coin but in actual silver and i said oh how much would that cost to make and then i got to resell it and like it, uh there would have to be a lot of people and then we're talking like a real coin you know what i mean like monetary uh value so i don't think i don't know how that works i don't think i can do that um the other thing that forrest Fenn mentioned was this isn't a coin don't call it a coin a coin is something you can actually pay for goods with, right? And uh, a coin, this is a medallion or a token. So we'll call it a medallion or a token. I like coin because it goes with cow lasers, right? But it's not a coin in the traditional sense that it has not been minted and you cannot go to the store and buy something with it, right? We all know that. I think we're all, we already knew that. So I guess you could call it a medallion. Plus it's pretty big, a lot bigger than a normal coin. So I guess medallion or token would be a proper terminology. And I still didn't turn the air on. Hang on. <laughs> Went up to do it, and then I didn't. Whoo! It's going to be a hot one today. Gary, how many people are going to be looking for the treasure? You mean, I'm assuming you mean this summer. I don't know. You know, Forrest Fenn said 300,000 people involved, but does that just mean people who are, they've looked at it online or seen an article? I mean, how many books of Thrill the Chase have sold? 
and how many people are actively going to go out there and search? I'm sure it's well below 100,000, but I don't know. I got no idea. Um, yeah, I'm sure it's a couple thousand. I mean, it's probably 10 or 20,000 people, I would think, minimum, right? But I really don't know how much. It's too bad there's not a place people can go. Well, that people wouldn't do it. That's, I was about to say, somewhere people can go to register to say, yeah, this is my state. I'm looking here. Not where they're looking, just a state. You know what I mean? But how do you get the word out to all the people that to do it? I mean, it's all on people to do it. So It's an interesting question, though. How many people have been out to look? And I really hope people uh, leave these out there in the search area, at least one. Hopefully people have bought, you know, five or whatever, and they just want to leave one. But can you imagine finding this out in the... Uh, out in the wilderness somewhere in the Rocky Mountains. Even if you don't know what the Forest Fund treasure is, but you just happen to find one. Like, what is this? What's this on the back? I need a magnifying glass to read it. It's actually a treasure map. And I don't know if this came through before when it cut off. Uh, what I want you to do is when you get your coins in the mail, I want you to send me a picture of the coin, wherever and however you want to do it. But I'm going to make a video of all the pictures I get. So give me two weeks for all this to go out in the mail for people to get them. Everybody send me a picture of the craziest, uh, funniest picture you can with the coin, whether it's out in the wilderness where you're going to hide it or it's on your bookshelf or in your home or a picture with you, however you want to do it. But I'm going to make a video of all the pictures. So email me those pictures at kylelasers at gmail.com. And I think that would be pretty cool to see what everybody's idea is to do with their coin, right? So the 123 auction. The 123 auction is going to start next week. Uh, the books are in the mail. And thanks, Sean, for that video you did of the update I saw. Um, I should have those books on Wednesday. So maybe Wednesday night, maybe Thursday, I'll get the eBay auction going. Remember, it's the, the number one map, which has been safely secured in here ever since I first opened it. The number two coin, which is over here on the bookshelf. Throw the chase, too far to walk, once upon a while, all signed by Forrest Fenn. And he also did that little personal uh, caricature doodle stick man thing in each book. I don't know what those are going to look like yet. Uh, I'll see when they come in. I don't know what he wrote in the books. Um, but, yeah, all that's going to go in one auction on eBay. And we'll see. All right, goes it goes. I hope there's a collector. I mean, it's a really cool auction, right, to have the number one map signed by him, one out of 250 from Fenbury 3, and the number two coin, and then all three books. So that'll be next week. And I'll make a video that just shows each item. I'll make a video specifically for the auction, of course, and I'll put that up so everybody knows and the link to it. And that auction will probably run for seven days. And, uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. And then when that auction's done, I will put up the number four and the number five coin are going to be in separate auctions. You know, if there's anybody who really wanted a low sequence number, who missed out on the drawing or was not fortunate enough to have their number chosen to get a sequence number in the one to 20 range, um, the number four coin and the number five coin will both go up in separate auctions. So if somebody really wants one of those, that's, that'll be up too, probably in the next couple of weeks. Let's get the one, two, three auction out of the way first. So I got boxes and packing material all over the place. <laughs> I'll be glad when I'm caught up and I can get this place cleaned up. Um, and I don't have the boys this weekend, so they haven't seen the coin yet. I told them they're here, but they haven't been over to see it yet. So, uh, and I got work next weekend, so when will they come over again? It might be a little while. We've, I got to switch weekends uh, with their mother because I have to work. Uh, we're doing an upgrade at work. So whenever they come over, we'll have make a video and we'll have some fun with the coins with, uh, with the boys. You guys, did you see the video when Kathy sent me a package and I did the little treasure hunt with Chris and Eric where they got a thing and it was go different places? Maybe I should do that with the coin, and at the end it'll actually be the coin. Uh, let me think on that. That could be a fun thing. And what would really be cool is if I could work it out is to actually have the clues go around the house, but then we got to go to the park. There's a neighborhood park we always go to, and what if the clues let them in the park, and this was actually in the park, either buried or under a bush or whatever, but to actually be out in the park in the wild and they find it. So that would be a pretty neat idea. Hopefully I'll get some time to set that up, but uh, yeah. And I'll definitely put it in the vlog. If I can make that happen, I'll definitely put it in the vlog. Upload it so you guys can see it.
Yeah, that's a good idea, Lewis. Uh, here's the coin. Let me just pull one. This is number 99. 99 red balloons. Nina, anybody? I'm going to pull it out and show you guys up close. All these coins will be in the mail by the end of this week, uh, by Friday. That's my promise. Everything will be in the coin by Friday. Barring some kind of catastrophe that takes me away from this, everything will be in the mail by Friday. Um, the 300 coins that I have coming in will be here about the second week of June, and about 60 of those are already sold. So those people who have come in later through the website will have to wait until then, okay? Here is the Forest Fen Searcher coin. The Thrill of the Chase, Forest Fen, Treasure Hunt. For anybody that doesn't know, there was a design contest. We had 144 entries. Forest Fen picked this design himself. I think that's a pretty good picture of him, right? And here's the backside. It was important to Forest to have the poem on the back. You guys see that? My hand shaking too much. 2010 to 2018, it's a nice commemorative coin to commemorate the chase. The eight years we've been in the chase, and you see the sequence number is laser engraved on the bottom. Um, and yeah, I think it's a great idea as well to have the poem on the back. Good luck is for anybody. You got to remember the original idea. The original idea I had was for people to take these coins and hide them in the wilderness, in the Rocky Mountains, in their search area. And then somebody would find it. So that's why the good luck is on there. So somebody finds a coin like treasure hunt, what's this? It's telling you good luck with the treasure hunt if you decide to look. Now that's changed a little bit. Now that there's sequence numbers on the coin, a lot of people are collecting them as collectibles. This is the sequence number, right? And that's okay. And I don't know if I've ever really articulated this in the past, but now that we do have sequence numbers, what I'll do is I, will, I know who's bought every coin, right? And if you want to take a coin and hide it, it doesn't even have to be in the Rocky Mountains. You can hide it anywhere. Hide it in your local neighborhood park if you just think it's a good idea for somebody to find it. Anybody that hides a coin, if you let me know, if anybody ever contacts me to say, hey, I found this coin, this sequence number, I'll put them in contact with you. If, you're, if you agree to it and they agree to it, and then you guys can talk about what led them there. Did they look at the same clues that you did if you're going to hide it in your actual search area? I'll do that, but, you know, I'll try and put people in touch. So I'm happy to do that because I've got a spreadsheet that lists uh, what every coin went to. So now they're not going to know who I am. They may not know who I am. So when they find the coin, hopefully they'll do a Google search on Forest Fen coin, and then maybe they'll go to the website and they'll go to the videos. they got to figure out how to contact me at kylelasers at gmail.com, right? But if they can do that, that shows me they're interested enough to get involved and to get in the search if they don't if they find a coin and don't have no idea what Forest Fen is. But yeah, if you if you give me the permission, I'll either put them in touch with you or put you in touch with them. If somebody does contact me to say, hey, I found the coin, what's this all about? Yeah, I think it would really be neat to find one, don't you? Um 200 six, 200, so 300, 400. I, I never thought I needed, I need a big table, like like a conference table. But even if I had one, I don't have room in here to put it anywhere. So this is my little dining room table. And that's why it's they're stacked up. Because it'd be nice to have a table big enough where I could do all 600 in order. And then just, just pull them and ship them. But that's not the case. So this is how we're going to do it for now. Yeah, horns on the cow. I never noticed that. And actually, I may change the logo a little bit. I may change the cow. I'd already thought of that before somebody said, hey, dude, there's... So maybe that's a bull. Does that mean that's a bull and <laughs> not a cow? It's a bad joke in there somewhere. Um, I may change the logo. We'll see. So if you do order a coffee cup, it may be limited edition if that logo is going to change. And no, there won't be any sequence numbers on the coffee cups. I know what you're thinking. I already know what somebody just thought of. No sequence numbers on the coffee cups or the t-shirts, if anybody orders one. And again, that's just a way for you guys to show support for the channel, for the ideas, and to do another grand adventure. That money also will go toward the next grand adventure, which is coming. It's going to take a while for me to get all this settled, but there will be another grand adventure. Oh, yes. I had too much fun with the first one. 
And I think 67 people participated in those puzzles. And we had a lot of fun. So I probably shouldn't have done it during a two weeks recovery from a hernia surgery, but that's okay. Um, the probiotics I rubbed on there must've worked. So, and if they don't sell, the other thing is if they don't sell, I'll just pull them off the website. I mean, if nobody wants to buy one, that's fine. Then I'll just pull them down. So we'll figure that out. But I hope the coin's always available. That's the other question. Should we make this limited edition? In other words, right now we're up to 900. Should I just cut it off and then that'll be it? That's what I want to talk to Forrest Fenn about and see what he thinks. Um, if there's demand, you'd think you should keep selling more, but I don't know. We'll see. That's up in the air. But I am going to stop at the 900 mark and kind of get a long-term plan on what I want to do going forward with these coins, with the Forrest Fenn Searcher coins. Yes, Rick, I'm going to auction your gift. I know. it was, I, And I appreciate it that you gave it to me. But now that we have a number one map, a number two coin, and the three books, the one, two, three auction, I think makes sense. So thank you for giving it to me. But I'd like to put it in an auction so somebody who maybe just found out about the coins, didn't know about it back in the drawing, has a chance to get all those items signed by Forrest together in a nice auction. I don't think there's ever been an auction with... Uh, there may have been books that have been signed, but I don't think there's ever been an auction bundled with all these pieces bundled together. I mean, the provenance of that is pretty awesome, right? Antiques Roadshow in my future. Uh, so yeah, I wanted to put that up and, um, you know, somebody really wants it, they can have it. I, but you have to remember, I've got a bunch of coins. I can keep as many coins as I want that I don't sell, right? Won't be the low sequence numbers because of the drawing. Everybody got most of those, but that's okay. And I've got um, coins for uh, Chris and Eric. I've got coins for myself, and like I said, I'm keeping 777 because of my birthday, so when those coins come in, 777 is mine. I've had like five people want 777, but that's not going to happen. Um, and how we handle the sequence numbers going forward, 600 to 900. When you place your order, you can request a sequence number. I want 828 or whatever it is, and if it's available, I'll send it to you. And it's just going to be a first come, first serve. And there's already some people who have said, yeah, I want these and I've got it in the spreadsheet. But you got to pay for it. A lot of people have emailed me and said, I want these sequence numbers. Well, you got to pay for them and then you can have them if they're available. If you pay and your sequence numbers aren't available, then you just get lowest, uh, the lowest available if the particular sequence numbers aren't available. Easiest way to do it. I didn't want to do another drawing from like 500 to 600 or all that. Um, I got to get caught up on this and get this out before I get into anything like that again. So yeah, the sequence numbers going forward, first come, first serve, once you pay, once you pay, email me and say, these are the ones I would like and I'll let you know if they're available or not. Um, seems to be the fairest way to do it. But thank you, Rick, for number two. I just think it makes the most sense to put it in the auction. And who knows how high that's gonna go. I mean, I don't know if three people would be involved, want, would be involved in bidding on that or 300. I really have no idea. But the Fenbury map was really cool because um, there are only 250 of these made, and this is number one, so it's really awesome. And I'll make a video on all that next week when I get the books in. The books are supposed to be in on Wednesday. be interesting to see what Forrest Fenn signed in the books, right? I know he signed it, and he did a little stick man, but maybe he put something else in there. I don't know. But uh, I'm sure I'll put it in the video, what he put in those books when they come in next week. That's the other thing is I want to get all this done so that next week I can do the auction and do it the right way and uh, make it look right. So, all right, you guys got any questions? Because I'm going to start actually going through these and getting them packaged together. Dice, Andrew Dice Clay is tonight at 10 o'clock. I also want to see Deadpool and Han Solo. So over the next three days, I'm going to try and do all three of those things. It's just a break. Um, but we'll see. I may not do any of them. I may just stick with this. We'll see. Oh, and the other thing, the World Series of Poker is coming up out here in Vegas, right? So I wanted to go play poker, and uh, one of these that I'm keeping, I'm going to use this as my chip protector on the cards. At the poker table, everybody has different types of coins or poker chips. 
But I think this one's pretty cool, and I want to see if everybody at the table's like, what's that? And I'll be like, oh, yeah, there's a treasure on it. And I'll be like, and it's for sale. Go to TileLasers.com if you want to buy one. So I should go play. I never thought of that. I should go play in one of the small events of the World Series of Poker. That'd almost be like advertising the coin, right? I think they have daily tournaments that are 200 bucks, something like that. But eh, I don't really want to spend $200 in a tournament. I would rather go sit down in a cash game. I play poker, but it's cash games. At tournaments, I did I did win a seat for the World Series of Poker one time. 2010, 2009, when I first moved out here in Laughlin, Nevada. Back then, I used to gamble a lot, you know, before the kids. And uh, I had a diamond card, so they invited me. It was a... Uh, a tournament for a seat at the main event, and I won it. I won the tournament. But instead of the seat, I took eight grand instead. I could have played the main event. You know how hard that is to actually place or, or make it to that final table. So I took the eight grand. Man, that was two, 2009, I think, 2008. It's a good nine, eight or nine years ago. But, yeah, 8000 bucks. They just $100 bills. Here you go. Thank you for playing. So that was pretty awesome. I wish they'd send me that invite again. And that's the other, I never thought of trying to play some satellites to get into the World Series of Poker. I just don't have time anymore. I'm busy doing this and the website and the, and the vlogs. I don't have time to really hit the strip like I used to. But you never know. It's just prioritize, right? It's just priorities. You just got to prioritize. prioritize everything that's going on. And then when the boys are over here, I'm trying to hang out with them, and that puts things on hold. So, yeah, we'll get there. But I don't know. What do you think? Anybody that plays poker, chip protector? I know it's kind of big, but uh, I think it's awesome because it's a good conversation piece for people at the table. Who's this guy? Who's Forrest Fenn? What's this? And then you tell them, yeah, there's only $2 million uh, up for grabs if you solve this poem, right? If you figure out the clues. I wonder if anybody would want to buy it at the poker table. I don't know. One way to find out, I guess. And then out of my book, out of my uh, backpack, I bring them up. Man, just kidding. You guys tell them I'm trying to put off, trying to ship these. <laughs> All right, if you guys got any questions, I'm going to check the chat. Let me let me hear the questions. No, I haven't changed my mind on the auction at all. The auction's always been. There's going to be three auctions. I'm not changing my mind. I've just created three separate auctions now. Coin number four will be in an auction all by itself on eBay. Coin number five will be in an auction all by itself on eBay. And, of course, I'll let you guys know when so you, you have an idea when it's up there. And auction number three is going to be the one, two, three auction. The number one map signed by Forrest Fen, um, Fenbury three. The number two coin and all three books signed by Forrest Fenn. So I've never changed my mind. This is the plan. Three different auctions at three different times. I'm not gonna run it at the same time, okay? And again, I gotta get a laptop because I gotta go over here to see the questions. Where do warm waters halt? I'm gonna put up a vlog tomorrow on where warm waters halt. It's been months since I've done a Forrest Fenn vlog. As a lot of people have reminded me in the last couple of weeks. Um, so tomorrow, where warm waters halt, uh, Forrest Fenn vlog. Yeah, so stay tuned for that. It'll be up. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. The Grand Adventure. Let me think. The Grand Adventure. You know, I was putting up videos on the puzzles. I guess I didn't. Oh, but you know what? I didn't do the explanation videos, did I? I apologize. I got involved with this and forgot all about it. So the Grand Adventure, for those of you that don't know, I created a series of puzzles that I created through YouTube videos, right? Think of it as a treasure hunt, but not a book with clues. There's YouTube videos that have clues. And what I gave away were seven treasure hunting books, the three forest fens and then four other active treasure hunting books. And uh, I charged five bucks for people to do that, to get access to those videos. And it was a lot of fun. Um, 
But I, I released the puzzle videos. Remember the chess video was probably the hardest one for everybody. Me and Eric playing chess. But and then I was going to do a solution video, which I never did. So I apologize. I'll have to make those and get the solution videos up. I figured most people knew what the solutions were already, but the playing cards. And I don't want to give the solution because I can use it again. Now, I said I would give the solution, so I will. The playing cards. There were groups of playing cards, right? And on that table, if you remember, there was a remote. There was my Cox Cable remote. And if you look at a remote for the TV or if you look at a telephone, each number has letters below it, right? Number one is ABC. Number two is DEF. It's a telephone code. The playing cards were in groups of two or three. So three nines meant you go to number nine on the phone, on your cell phone, and you go to the third letter. The number of numbers is which letter you pick. So if it was six by itself, it's the first letter under six. If it was three sixes by itself grouped together, the third letter under six. And that would have gave you random letters. This was a two-part puzzle. They were in groups of two. The playing cards were in groups of two, right? So, and I'm just off the top of my head. Let's say the first two groups came out to DN. Remember the grid that I emailed everybody off the Craigslist, Craigslist posting? Remember the cipher square that had all the letters? DN, you were supposed to go down the columns, DN, and that would give you the actual letter, and that spelled out the message. Um, I believe it was a question, and you had to send me the answer to advance to the next puzzle. So thanks for reminding me about the grand adventure. I forgot I didn't do the explanation videos. So I will. At some point, I will. And there will be another grand adventure, guys. It may take me six months to get to it, but I'm going to do another series of puzzles. Uh, somebody said, why don't you do a, a puzzle and have the coins as a prize? Yeah, definitely. The coins may be the prize. I may do a cash prize. I don't know. We'll see. Um, that's going to be down the road, but I will do another one, definitely. Because, you know, my... YouTube channel is all about ciphers and puzzles and treasure hunts. I love that stuff. I love hiding a message in a certain way for people to figure out. So Forrest Fenn just happens to be the biggest one that's out there, right? And the one that most people are interested in at this point. But there's other, I mean, Astana myth, uh, that's $5,000 cash and a trip to Astana, Kazakhstan. Kazakhstan, sorry. Kazakhstan, I remember somebody was like, you don't pronounce it Kazakhstan, Borat. Kazakhstan. And you don't have to take the trip, but $5,000 is $5,000. Um, the Beacon Star is really cool. I don't have the time to concentrate on these treasure hunts because I got so many things going on. But what I need to do is just take a block of time and concentrate on each one. The Beacon Star is a great story. Um, if you don't have the book, check it out. It's out on Kindle. And there's a lot of puzzles. The weird thing about the Beacon Star is he does, never once mentions the treasure hunt in the book, and he never says what it is. It, whatever he hid is in the Denver, Colorado area, maybe suburbs of Denver, Colorado. That much you can tell by the clues because he mentioned some street names and he mentions, um, I believe he mentions the city and some street names. But he put out a, he put out a post on Facebook and on Twitter and he gave a puzzle which are just colored lines. To me, it looks like pickup sticks. Remember pickup sticks as a kid? They're colored lines. And he said, if you can solve that, it gives you an idea of what the treasure is in the book that he did. And he said something about the value never goes down, but it can go up. So don't know what it is. Uh, the other thing is anybody that did Kalazar's Grand Adventure, let me be sure this doesn't cut off. Anybody that did Kalazar's Grand Adventure, there was a video where there was a guy with headphones and like uh, glasses, and he's sitting there and he just gives random numbers. You remember that? No, random numbers were zeros and ones. It was... Uh, Binary? If I remember right, I think it was binary. That's the author of The Beacon Star. He's got all these YouTube videos, over 100 YouTube videos of him sitting there saying random numbers, and they're all codes. And I, that's another one I'd like to concentrate on. I want to know what he's trying to communicate through those YouTube videos. Over a year, he made all these videos. I mean, it's just an awesome idea. Um, it's a little creepy because it looks like he's in a basement or something with weird concrete walls. And all. At first, I thought he was tied up, like handcuffed. I don't think he is. And it's just him reading off these random numbers. You've got to write them all down and then figure out how to solve that code. So that'd be another great one that we could all work on. Either in the Facebook group, Kalazar's Grand Adventures, or I make videos on it saying, hey, I'll write all the numbers out. I'll be like, here's the numbers. Who can help us break this code? And I reached out to him to make sure it was okay to use one of his videos to, to link to it with the Grand Adventure. And he was like, yeah, that's fine. 
Um, so really, uh, really seems like a cool guy. Really, Randy Pichel is, I think I pronounced his last name right. Randy Pichel, the Beacon Star. Check it out on Amazon or uh, Kindle or wherever you can buy it. And it's really a good story. The story of the book, forget about the treasure hunt. The story of the book is like uh, Harry Potter meets, it's a little Dungeons and Dragons. Um, Harry Potter meets Game of Thrones. The story is like Harry Potter meets Game of Thrones. It's really a good book if you like those things, which I do. So... Uh, that's the Beacon Star. Astonomyth, Beacon Star. The Balsall treasure is something hidden in the UK. You don't have to go there. It's a Lorraine cross, I think, is what the prize is. I couldn't get into that book. It's kind of hard to read. It's all about the author's actual descendants from, like, the 1600s all the way up to the 1900s over there in the UK. I really, I had the book, but I really couldn't get into that one. Um, oh, and then Fandango, Key to the Wind, was the fourth book. Something's going on with that book because it's been, what, 15 years, 12 years, and nobody seems to know where this thing is. It's on Arcadia Island uh, right off the coast of Maine. I think I have that right. And, yeah, those are four active treasure hunts right now. Astonomyth and Beacon Star are the two new ones. And Boss Hall. Fandango's been around forever, and nobody can seem to find it. So, And I thought there was another one I could have done, but I didn't include the book. Oh, The Secret. You remember the Expedition Unknown on The Secret? That was a book I could have done, but I don't, uh, I do have the book. Somebody did send me the book, but because that one's so old and nobody, that one's kind of not so much a treasure hunt as can we figure out where this guy hit this? I guess that is a treasure hunt, but so many years have gone by and the landscape has changed so much that it would be very difficult to hide. Um, Dustin, if you're going on your trip, good luck. Last I heard you were planning on it to go look for one of the secret uh, casts. So if you go, let me know how it goes. And like I said, let's do a Skype interview. One, if you find it, but even if you don't find it, um, let's do a Skype interview. You can kind of, if, if you want to put out there what you're thinking and where it is. And also the, the Rose Festival medallion. I'm in that group. I see you guys out in um, Washington State, right? That's where you guys are at, the Seattle area outside of Portland, I think. Good luck on that, too. I think that starts Monday or next week. So good luck on that, guys. I wish they do that here uh, around Christmas time. We have the Jingle Bell Rock. Uh, Decal has got a website for that. You guys know Decal from uh, Forest 10 thing. That's how I met him, through the Jingle Bell Rock contest. I haven't found it yet, but I've been involved the last three years, and I was like a block away one year. It's hard. Um, but there's a rock they put out. It's like a paving stone. When you flip it over, it says, hey, you found the KKLZ Jingle Bell Rock. You turn it in, you get 10 grand. And they do that between Thanksgiving and Christmas every year. So kind of fun. I think every city should do something like that personally. But And Pawn Stars, uh, the show Pawn Stars, the pawn shop right over here was a sponsor one year. So that was kind of cool. We would go down to the actual pawn shop and get clues and stuff. The radio station set up down there. And I went down to talk to Rick and was like, hey, I'm the one who won your uh, – World Cup medal on pornography. He's like, oh, that was you. And I'm like, yeah, thanks for buying it back. Um, and that fake profile pic I just put up on Facebook was me on that show, Christopher Titus asking me the questions. I got seven out of 10. And I was the first person to beat Rick, Corey, and Chum Lee when they filmed. Not in the order they showed it, but in the order of filming, I was the very first person to, uh, to beat him. And he was pissed. He, he was not happy because they went through like 20 contestants and he easily beat all of them. But I finally got him, so. Anyway, all right, I'll see if you guys got any more questions. Well, that's the thing when you design a puzzle, any puzzle, you can't make it too easy so everybody's going to get it, and you can't make it too hard to where nobody's going to get it. There's a fine line in between that you have to figure out. And some of the puzzles for the Grand Adventure I did were easy, and they progressively got harder. It's interesting. Ones I thought were really going to be hard, people got right away, and ones I thought were easier is what people struggled with. So it was really an education for me as well. There were 15 videos I put out. 
And I think I've released most of them on my YouTube channel. If you want to check them out and just see how they work. Um, but yeah, that one, uh, where Eric was doing the dab and I had the words, I didn't think that one was that difficult, but that really, uh, tripped people up for a while. And I know you guys were sharing because as soon as one person sent me the right answer, then I would get a bunch coming in and that's cool. You guys share all you want. There's no rules against that. Just like Forrest Fan or any other treasure hunt, we can all share whatever we want, right? But yeah, and some of them I made too hard. Maybe the playing card one was too hard, but that was why one reason why that was only $5 is because it was, it was a learning tool for me to understand how I should make this. And, um, and me manually email, I make so much work for myself. I had to manually email 76 people and they would send in an answer to let, let them know if it was right or wrong so that they would know they're waiting until noon the next day for the next puzzle. So if we do another one, it definitely won't be five bucks, but, uh, yeah, those were a lot of fun. But again, I got to come up with the puzzles that are hard, but not too hard, right? And everybody's at different levels on how their cipher and puzzle solving skills are. I've been doing a lot of escape rooms here out here in Las Vegas. Escape rooms are really fun if you've never done one. And uh, that's given me some ideas for a couple things. And really what I was trying to do, if you look at it in a certain way, is a, an escape room, but online, an online escape room. You figure out the puzzle and then you can advance to the next room or the next video, right? So it's kind of the idea. Nobody's really doing that as far as I know. I know some people have used videos. Uh, Beth had emailed me to point out that, yeah, yeah, somebody's doing it, but not the way I was doing it, I guess. Not strictly through YouTube videos. Usually there's a book involved or something else. I just wanted to do straight YouTube videos, and that's it. And now that I have the website, it might be that the videos are not going to be on the website and not on YouTube anymore. That's something else I'm looking at, right? Um, we'll see. That's all down the road. The other thing is I got approved to be an Amazon affiliate, um, which I didn't think I would, but they came through and approved it. So now I can list things that you can buy off of Amazon on the website, and I get like a couple pennies per item or something. It's no extra cost to you guys. So that's something else I got to set up. What I was thinking of doing is for first-time forest fence searchers, this is a list of what you should take with you. What do you need when you go search if you're going to go in the Rocky Mountains? You need a compass, maybe a GPS. You need a water, a canteen, you need a backpack. You need, you know, make a list of things that people might not think about when they go search and have that, the links there to take you to Amazon to buy them. Or almost like a Forest Fence starter kit. These eight essential things are what you need. Here's a way you can order all of them just like that and boom, you're ready to search. Because if I went out there and searched, I would be in trouble. I'd probably be lost in the first five minutes. So what I would do is take about a hundred of these and like Hansel and Gretel, I would just leave a trail. That's how I would get back to my car. Every 10 feet, I would leave a coin. <laughs> and then people would pick them up, and I'd still be lost. So, yeah, a lot of people ask, why haven't you searched? You've been involved with the Forest Fen thing for six years. Why aren't you out there? Because I'm scared to go out there. No, not really scared, but, you know, I would really have to be confident to spend the time and money to drive out there. It's about 10 hours away from me, depending where in the four states. I'm about 10 hours from New Mexico, and I think I'm about 10 hours from, like, Yellowstone. 10 to 12, kind of like in the halfway point. But uh, yeah, I would really, you know, take somebody with you. Let everybody know where you're going. You guys know all the rules, or should by now, with some of the problems that have happened with people that have been out there. So my idea was just make a list on my website saying, hey, if you're going to go look, especially if it's your first time, you need a pair of good hiking boots. You need a backpack. You need water. You need food. What if you do get stuck or trapped or turned around? You need matches to start a fire, right? You need all these different things. So... Uh, here's a list of things you can take with you. I don't know. It's just an idea. What do you guys think of that? I think a Gypsy's Kiss has done a video on it. I just don't know if anybody's actually linked to say, here's where you can actually go buy it. That's all. So, just an idea. I really don't want to do this today. Uh, <laughs> but I got to. I got to get some of them done. There's no way I'm going to get it done if I don't just do some. So... I think I'll cut the video off. I don't know if you guys actually want to watch me just package these up, do you? I don't know, I've got to open up the spreadsheet and see who's getting what. PayPal's definitely been my friend because through PayPal I can print the shipping label and pay the post office right from PayPal. So I'm glad I did it that way because that really helped me out. My original idea was to write out labels and and it's like, no, you print them right from PayPal. You don't have to write them. Well, I did go out and buy a printer so I could print that stuff out. When I set this up, I didn't even have a printer. 
So, like I said, I jumped into the pool with both feet and didn't know how to swim, and I'm learning as I go. So bear with me, guys. Bear with me. What do you think? Kyle Lasers coffee cups available on KyleLasers.com. And, uh, yeah, they're there if you want to buy them. Yeah, that's a good point, Mary. How about bear spray? If somebody's going to go look for the Forest Fence treasure, should you have bear spray with you? Probably. I mean, just in case. I guess it depends where you're going, right? <laughs> yeah. But where, where the heck do you find bear spray at? I guess if you're going to actually drive to the Rocky Mountains, there's stores that sell them. But for me, I want everything in my car ready to go when I drive, so I would get it off Amazon. And that's what I'm saying. It's maybe a fire starter, one of those fire starter things, and a uh, GPS. You're going to need a coat if it gets cold out there, right? I mean, it depends when you're going, what time of the year. Some people are out there uh, looking in the wintertime when it's still cold out there. You know, everybody's got different ideas. And, but my idea was just to list different things you could buy. Maybe a tent. How about camping? How about outdoor camping gear type stuff? So, I don't know. We'll see. I got to get that's all other point I got to get to on the website. But again, I'm putting off doing the coins, aren't I? Yeah, somebody said you're not making headway on those coins. I know. I know. What is it? 11.30 here in Vegas? All right. And yes, the Vegas Knights hockey game is on Monday night. Yeah, I think the Vegas Knights are going to be the Stanley Cup champions. I have not seen a game yet. Tickets are pretty crazy out here. $300, I think, for cheap, cheap seats. 200 bucks for cheap seats. But that would be awesome to take the boys to a game, maybe you know down the road a couple years from now when they're a little bit older. And then the Raiders are coming, right? If you guys saw the one YouTube, uh, did I put it in the vlog? No, maybe I didn't. I'll probably I'll put it in. I'll put it in the Warm Waters vlog tomorrow. At the mall here in Vegas, they've got a big artist rendering of the stadium with the strip. It's really a cool picture. They got some footballs and the Raiders. It's a Raiders store, right? So I took a picture with the boys looking at it, and I'll put that at the end of the Warm Waters vlog tomorrow. So that stadium is going to be awesome. I think it's going to take them two or three years to build it, but uh, you can go see a Raiders game. You can go see a hockey game. I mean, just two years ago, that we didn't have any professional sports teams in Vegas. You could bet on all the games, but you couldn't go see one. So now you can bet one and go see it in person. So that's interesting. And I bet you within the next 10 years, we'll probably have a baseball team to a professional league baseball. Maybe. It's, you know, it's possible. I hope so. I like baseball. We used to go to the old Tiger Stadium in Detroit. It's called America Park now, which I've been to as well. But... Uh, Good times, good times in Detroit. I missed it. All right, you guys. I want to play music, but um, YouTube blocks the music because it's copyrighted. So all I can play is the Cow Laser song. You guys heard that. I'm sure you're tired of that. So no music. I'll just leave it the way it is. I'm going to start going through these. Thanks for tuning in. And look for the Warm Waters vlog tomorrow. And uh, I'll cut this off at some point. Because the coffee's gone. Yeah, it's kind of weird. Yeah, it's true. Okay.
Alright, I'm making a list of what coins I gotta pull. So I'm going to do it, but just grab a person and start pulling their coins, right? And remember, if you guys didn't hear it earlier, when you get your coins in the mail, send me a picture of the coin. Any crazy, funny, kooky picture you want. But I'm going to make a video of all the searchers with their coins. Whether it's out in the wilderness, in your home, with your kids, whatever you want in a picture, in a video, you send it to me. The funnier, the better. So I think it'll be fun. Not going to be a contest. I'm just doing it to show everybody the coins and what people do with their coins. So these are in order, kind of. Wish they would have made these sequence numbers a little bigger. Fifteen. You know, the coins are here, but you're missing the one that you need is not there. And you just go, what? How can the one I need not be here? What's going on? And then, you know, I'm having nightmares. Did I send the wrong person? Did I send somebody the wrong sequence number? How bad would that be, right? Oh, it's right here. So I'm looking at the wrong number. There we go. Okay. So, no, let's not even go there. Nobody's getting the wrong sequence number. I make sure it's right before I send them out. Hey, right, there we go. That wasn't too bad. Okay, so this is going to be the pile up here in the corner. These are ready to go. Postage and get them out. All right, I'm going to ask you guys for a vote. Tomorrow's for Spend Warm Waters video. Should I do it live or should I just record it like I normally do and upload it? What do you guys think? Problem is if I do it live, there can be problems that can get interrupted like this one did. Uh, I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. I've never done a live other than this for the coins. I've never done like a live treasure hunting video before. So don't know if that's a good idea or not. And then some people are doing Facebook videos, right? Instead of YouTube, they're doing live videos on Facebook. But when I did that, they also copyrighted the music. They said, ah, you can't have something you don't own in your video. So what Facebook did, I mean, yeah, what Facebook did is they muted the video. They just took the audio off. So that's out there somewhere on Facebook uh, with no audio. So I'm sure people are looking at that going, what in the world is this? Now, I probably see... Darn it. I probably already pulled these. That's why they're not here. Let me look over here. No, they're not there. 
Well, we'll turn off. They're here somewhere. Okay, another one down. I guess I could print the list out, huh? Instead of walking back and forth. I do have a printer. Oh. Yeah, that's right, Lewis. I'm going to get bald for these coins. The answer is, David, they're kind of in order. They're in groups of 50 in a bag, but within that 50, they go out of order for some reason. Why, I don't know. But that's how I got them. 294. 697. 298, sweet. <laughs> so, let's do the 200, since that's what I've got spread out here. end it that's a good idea gary so uh i'm gonna end it so i can put some music on and get going on these coins i'll be on tomorrow look for the warm waters vlog and i hope everybody has a good memorial day I the pinion coffee is not ground and i don't have a grinder i open it it's it's whole beans i'm like uh oh so i gotta get a grinder so i haven't uh tried it yet but i will don't worry all right guys i'll see you tomorrow